All right, thanks everyone for joining today. We're going to talk about meaningful SEO metrics. So let's go ahead and get started. And uh, just so you know who I am, uh, I am the founder of an SEO agency called Net Concepts, which actually no longer exists. It's uh, now part of Covario out of San Diego, a search marketing firm. I am also the inventor of a SEO technology platform called Gravity Stream. I um, also am co-author of The Art of SEO. Now in its second edition, I'm happy to say, it just is coming out in 10 days in ebook form and uh, be available in the bookstores a couple weeks after that. So uh, hot off the presses, it's an extra 100 pages uh, more than what it already was. It was quite a thick tome before. It's 600 pages now. It's about 700. And I'm also author of Google Power Search. So with that, um, these are the two books that uh, I just mentioned, The Art of SEO, and then Google Power Search. And then another fun little uh, tidbit about me, I have three daughters, and my oldest daughter, she started a website when she was 13. It was called Neopets Fanatic, and uh, she still owns it, and it makes money for her while she sleeps using SEO and uh, uh, blog technology. She runs it on WordPress and uses AdSense to monetize the site. So she makes money day and night uh, just by having people come to her site because she ranks quite well for uh, keywords like Neopets, and Neopets Cheats, and Neopets Avatars, and so forth. Which uh, Neopets is a popular kid site owned by Nickelodeon. So there's kind of a fun little uh, tidbit for you. Uh, you can do this too. It's not uh, rocket science. You can have a website that makes money for you while you sleep. You just have to come up with a compelling topic, do your keyword research, figure out what sort of content that you want to create that's value-added, and uh, uh, build up authority and importance in the eyes of Google by getting links and doing link baiting and stuff. These are the sorts of things that we've talked about in past webinars. Um, I've done one on link building for you guys, which uh, you're still able to listen to the recording on. And um, you know, So just applying some of the strategies and tactics that I've already discussed in the past several webinars, and you can do this too. In this webinar, we're going to talk specifically about SEO metrics, how to make um, uh, important data-driven decisions about what to do and what not to do based on data, on, on where you've been and where you think you're going, predictive analytics, as well as kind of rear view mirror looking in the, um, at what you have gotten to help you make good decisions. Now let me differentiate between search analytics and web analytics, because most of us are thinking in terms of web analytics, which means like uh, Google Analytics, Web Trends, and um, Omniture, and that sort of thing, right? So that's basically like looking in the rearview mirror. It's telling you what you've already done, what you've already gotten. It doesn't tell you what you could get if you did things differently. So that's an important distinction. If it's the difference between search analytics technology and, or, or software and web analytics software is kind of like which tool would you want to have at your disposal if you're, let's say, a professional photographer? Would you want uh, a, a camera phone or would you like a DLSR, uh, DSLR, yes, um, a digital SR, SLR camera like a Nikon D90 or something, right? I, I would prefer the latter. And so if I'm going to do some really killer SEO, I want some killer SEO analytics software at my disposal. The web, web analytics doesn't go away. I'm still going to mine my uh, Google Analytics and Omniture and what, what have you that I'm uh, using to track the conversions and, and the traffic coming in and so forth into my website. But I need, I need both. Of course, you can't reliably or reproducibly improve what you don't measure. So most of the folks that I talk to are unfortunately not measuring most of the sorts of metrics that I consider important. And we'll get into what these are in just a few minutes. But let's first talk about some old school SEO metrics that you probably are tracking or at least think uh, about tracking. 
and then we'll talk about some kind of next generation metrics, things that we probably don't even know exist that, that uh, I think you should be tracking. Let's start with search engine rankings. I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? You should use some sort of technology or uh, software, ideally, to track this rather than doing it by hand because it's a lot more scalable that way. Uh, one of the tools I, I like is called Authority Labs. It's authoritylabs.com. Um, but there are other tools out there, of course, that, that do this. And the benefit of using a, a, um, a software or, or a service to track your rankings is that when you use a service that um, comes in through different IP addresses or proxies or is uh, um, not, not uh, pinned to a particular location and particular search history, you're not getting skewed results, right? When you do a search on Google, you're getting results that are tailored to you. They're tailored to your past search history on Google. They're tailored to your location, right? So you get a lot of local results, uh, local to your, your city or town that you're in. So we don't want that. We want to see more generic set of results that's more representative of uh, your, your market, if it's the U.S. or U.S. and Canada or what have you. Uh, also, we want to track keyword popularity and see what is uh, popular and what's not popular with searchers. Is it the singular? Is it the plural? Is it uh, uh, one verb tense or another? Is it a uh, you know, one synonym or another synonym? We need tools to tell us what uh, what's popular and what's not popular. And so there are tools out there that um, are paid, and there are tools out there that are free for checking your keyword popularity um, uh, you know, in, in this major search engine. So uh, from Google, there are some free tools that you absolutely need to have in your toolbox, including Google AdWords Keyword Tool, Google Insights for Search, and um, uh, Google Trends. Um, incidentally, uh, we're going to talk more about some of these tools in uh, a few minutes. And also, if I haven't, um, if uh, you haven't attended my previous webinars, I encourage you to to watch the recordings because many of the uh, tools that I don't have time to discuss now, like the Google AdWords Keyword Tool, I've actually discussed in past webinars. So. Um, indexation is another one to track to know how many pages of your site are in Google's big database. It's index. And one way to do that is a, a site colon query. You type in site colon dub 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 dot whatever your site name is dot com into the Google search box, but that's very imprecise. A much better way to do it is to sign up with Google uh, Webmaster Tools and uh, ver verify that you're a site owner of your site, and then you can get uh, better data in terms of indexation numbers and some of the other metrics that we're going to talk about here shortly, such as link popularity. Right, so um, what is link popularity? I talked about this uh, in some detail on the link building webinar. This is like the number of votes or links that are pointing to your site, and you can use tools like Open Site Explorer, Majestic SEO, link research tools, to look at link popularity not only of your own site but of competitor sites as well, which is pretty cool because then you can uh, ascertain where uh, they're getting most of their, their authority and importance and trust from and uh, kind of cherry pick those best sites to get links from yourself. You can also use, as I mentioned, Google Webmaster Tools, which is part of Google Webmaster Central. And uh, you have to be a verified site owner in order to see the link popularity data. You can't look at your competitors uh, through that tool. But these other three tools I just mentioned, absolutely. You can look at competitors, other top ranking sites, and kind of reverse engineer where they're getting their, their page rank from. Speaking of page rank, um, I, I threw around a couple of terms like trust, authority, importance. And uh, PageRank is actually the name that Google calls their, their algorithm for importance. And there is a trust component and an authority component baked into the PageRank algorithm. PageRank is named after Larry Page, co-founder of Google. And uh, just bear in mind that this is really something that's more for entertainment purposes only nowadays. Um, the PageRank scores that are, are public to us to us SEOs and webmasters is not necessarily the page rank data that is available and used by 
uh, by Google and, and the ranking algorithm. So it, it absolutely isn't. In fact, it's not the same thing, right? So we're getting an export which is imprecise and probably not accurate. Um, you, you'll see that some sites get uh, tweaked downwards with PageRank uh, uh, reduction on the, on the PageRank meter in the Google toolbar, and yet their rankings don't uh, diminish or, or fall at all. So clearly something is uh, um, not correlated there between the PageRank scores that we see served up by the Google toolbar server and uh, the rankings. All right, so every page has its own PageRank score. Scores that are reported according to the toolbar server are months out of date, uh, so take it with a grain of salt. That said, there's another metric that can kind of pseudo replace PageRank, and uh, well, actually it's several metrics that are third-party metrics uh, similar to PageRank. One is called MozRank, another is called MozTrust. Uh, we'll get into those in a little bit when we talk more about Open Site Explorer. Um, there's also AC Rank, which is a majestic SEO um, uh, metric. So Majestic is a competitor to Open Site Explorer from SEMOS. And then um, uh, Kemper Link Juice uh, metric is uh, yet another importance type of metric uh, relating to links, and that's uh, part of uh, linkresearchtools.com. So uh, more old school SEO metrics. There's cost and ROI, like sales by keyword, sales by engine, by search engine, cost per lead, that sort of thing. But what I want to encourage you to do, to do is go beyond these old school metrics. Um, it, I'm not discouraging you from still tracking them, but you need to go beyond those to um, really get a, a, a good read on what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. So that's where these next generation SEO metrics come in. And let's talk about these. Starting off with a, um, uh, a metric that I call page yield. And uh, what this refers to is the percentage of unique pages yielding search engine delivered traffic in a given month. In other words, if you look at the percentage of your site that um, is bringing in traffic from Google, let's say it's 50%, right? So that would actually be a, a, a pretty good outcome because in most cases it's far less than, uh, than that. So it, 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 typically what happens is a minority of your web pages are bringing in any visitors from Google. That's a problem. And that's something that is m most of the time invisible to webmasters that are not tracking that and they have no idea that that's happening. We'll talk more about how to fix that in a minute. Keyword yield, that's another metric, and that one gives you the ratio of keywords to pages that are yielding search traffic. All right, so let's say that you have on average five keywords per page that are bringing in traffic from Google. That's not bad, but wouldn't it be better if you had 10 keywords per page that are bringing in traffic from Google? All right, so that's a, that's a better outcome because you're, it's like you're casting a wider net and capturing a, a larger um, share of keywords with each page that you have indexed. That's a good thing. Next metric is da, 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 brand to non-brand ratio. That looks at the percentage of search traffic coming from brand keywords versus non-brand keywords. If you have a very high ratio, brand to non-brand, that means that you are overly reliant on your brand name and your domain name and your company name, whatever, to get traffic from Google. And those are kind of like white pages searches where the person already knows you exist, that you're in the consideration set. They're probably going to find you some way or another. So it's not really – I wouldn't even consider it really SEO traffic. So the non-brand keywords, though, you're in a competitive set of like you know somebody who's searching for sheets or, or, or t-shirts or what have you and they're not putting your brand name in that query you may not even be in the consideration set at all yet and if you don't appear in the top set of search results you probably won't be in the consideration set you absolutely need to have a healthy ratio 
here where you have a lot of non-brand traffic uh, coming in, non-brand keywords that are driving a significant portion of your search traffic. Another next generation SEO metric is unique pages. This is basically teasing out what out of the indexation uh, numbers, what, what the uh, percentages or the, the number of pages that are duplicate versus unique um, in let's say Google's index or Bing's index. And oftentimes what happens is uh, there'll, there'll be complexities in the URL structure like um, uh, session IDs or tracking parameters and so forth that will confuse the spiders and they will get the same page of content but at differing URLs. So they get 10 copies of the same piece of content, the same product page, the same blog post or what have you. And uh, the search engine will not be able to figure out that it's duplicate or maybe they do figure out that it's duplicate. Google's pretty good at, uh, with its dupl duplicate content filter at figuring out what is duplicate. But what that does is it dilutes your page rank. You have uh, serious page rank dilution. You have your voting power uh, spread across all these different duplicates. It's a bad situation. So if we can kind of tease that out and see what our unique page numbers are versus how much of our site is um, that's indexed in, in Google is duplicate, then we can work to reduce uh, the duplicate content and, and mitigate the situation. Another next generation metric is visitors per keyword. That's the ratio of search engine delivered visitors to search terms. So let's say that you get five visitors for every keyword. If we can get 10 visitors for every keyword that you um, are ranking for in Google, that's a pretty good outcome, right? How do you know unless you start tracking it? Next uh, is index to crawl ratio. That's the ratio of pages indexed to the unique crawled pages. Now think about this. If you have like a, a visualize, if you will, a funnel, and at the top of the funnel you have crawled pages, or otherwise known as spidered pages, right? Crawled or spidered by Googlebot. And then next, down in the funnel, you have indexed pages. And then you have, uh, below that, ranking pages. And then below that, you have um, uh, traffic coming in, like click-through. Uh, people are actually visiting the pages. And then after that, you have conversions. People have actually bought something or uh, partaked in some sort of conversion event on your website, signed up for uh, your e-newsletter or um, requested a print catalog or, or filled out a contact us uh, inquiry form, whatever that conversion event is. And so there's that funnel. And at the top of the funnel you have the, the crawling and below that you have indexing, i.e. not every page that gets crawled is going to get indexed. It's not going to necessarily end up in Google's database just because Googlebot went and visited the page. So we need to track that. We need to know what's that ratio, how, how um, wide is that funnel at that point. Is uh, a, pretty, uh, a, a pretty healthy ratio. Most of the pages that are getting crawled are getting indexed. Well, that would be a good outcome. If not, we need to work to fix it. Engine yield, how much traffic the search engine delivers for every page that it crawls. Okay, so um, you know, it's just pretty straightforward. So every, um, for every page that is crawled, let's say there are 1,000 pages to a website, how much traffic is uh, being delivered on average to each of those 1,000 pages that are being crawled? Of course, that's going to be affected by how much of your site is going to get indexed out of what's getting crawled. So if you work to improve the previous metric of index to crawl ratio, you'll see better engine yield. Non-performing pages, this relates to that first next generation metric I talked to you about called page yield. Non-performing pages are pages that are delivering zero search visitors in a given time frame. Let me go into more detail on that. So let's imagine that you, you have a thousand pages to your website. Every page is like a virtual salesperson working for you. Right? You have a thousand virtual salespeople out there pounding the pavement trying to bring in uh, prospects for you from Google. 
Well, let's say that out of those 1,000 pages, those 1,000 virtual salespeople, only 20% are actually working. The rest are sitting on the bench. 80% of your virtual sales force is taking a smoking break. That's a bad idea, right, because you're really missing out on a lot of opportunity. So these are like freeloaders who are sitting on the bench collecting a paycheck doing nothing for you, and the 20% is carrying the, the full load and trying to you know, bring in all the business for you. Well, you need to work to improve that. First of all, we need to know that 80% of uh, your sales force are freeloaders, right? So we need to track these non-performing pages that aren't bringing in any visitors from Google in a given month. And then we need to work to correct this situation and reduce the number of freeloaders, reduce that percentage. As I uh, alluded to earlier, this percentage is much larger than you think, and uh, it's really it's low-hanging fruit. If you especially target the most frequently crawled non-performing pages, these are ones that Google thinks highly of for whatever reason. They Googlebot keeps coming around and visiting those pages, even though no search visitors are coming in to those URLs. So those would be a great target for um, doing some optimization work. Maybe you've, you've targeted the wrong keyword, something that nobody searches for, and you just need to make some tweaks to the keyword focus on the page, right? So it could be a simple fix. This is potentially low-hanging fruit in, in consultant speak. I, I love that term. No, actually, I hate that term, low-hanging fruit. So overused. So anyways, um, this is a great opportunity. You definitely want to uh, uh, examine your non-performing pages. And there are actually tools out there that will um, uh, give you insight into this. If you, by the way, can't get these non-performing pages to perform, you should carve them out of your site tree and, and stop passing page rank or, or link authority to those pages so that they're, they're not um, bleeding away page rank from your important pages on your site. Here's an example of a report showing non-performing pages, and you can see it's sorted by uh, crawler activity. In other words, the more Googlebot hits that page in a month, the higher the number, and then that's uh, sorting those pages to be up at the top. But the, all these pages that are being reported on aren't getting a single visitor from Google even though they're getting crawler activity. All right, and then um, let's now talk about scoring your SEO because it's not just a qual it's not just qualitative or you know it's not just art. I know the name of the book is the art of SEO, but there's serious science to this, right? We we need to take an experimental approach and figure out what works, what doesn't work, run hypotheses and tests, and see what the outcome is, right? Because you could be wrong. And a great way to do this is to use tools that will give you insight into what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong, um, not just qualitatively, but quantitatively. So scoring, applying scoring factors to things like your title tags, your anchor text, your keyword prominence, your meta descriptions, and, and that, so that's on-page factors, but also off-page factors as well, things that are not on the web page or in the HTML of the web page, things that are off the site even that are affecting the page in question and where it ranks, like inbound links, uh, trust, authority, uh, anchor text, et cetera, et cetera, right? So those sorts of things, uh, if we can score those as well, that would be even better. There are some technologies that will allow us to do this um, at the enterprise level, and now you're getting you know, pretty expensive when you're talking about enterprise SEO tools, but one of them is Kavaria's Organic Search Insight. And uh, at a small business level, of course, you're going to um, get much less out of a small business tool than you would an enterprise level tool, but HubSpot's website, grader.com, gives you a little bit of a, a, a report card, but, uh, you know, it just, it, it, it's only kind of entry level. It's not like uh, an enterprise tool. If you're interested in learning more about this topic of scoring your SEO using uh, tools and technologies, I wrote an article for Search Engine Land on the topic, and there is the URL. All right. Here is a screenshot of uh, the Organic Search Insight uh, platform 
from Covario showing how it scores and provides automated recommendations based on the, the scoring that it's uh, uh, come up with. And then you can even take it to another level and do predictive analytics. Um, you know, not Well, I guess in a way scoring your SEO is predictive analytics because you don't have to wait for your rankings and the traffic and the conversions in order to see what you've done right and what you've done wrong. So that is truly predictive analytics. But you can even take it to uh, a level of, of real time where you're getting real time feedback as you are writing the content. You can see that you are leaving out the important keywords that, you're, you're, uh, that you should be targeting. That's pretty cool. So um, if you uh, are at a small business level, then a tool like Scribe, if you are running WordPress on your blog or your website, uh, Scribe is an SEO WordPress plugin that gives you real-time feedback on your uh, content as you're writing it. And then if you're more at an um, enterprise level, there's a Compendium Blogware, which is a blogging platform for uh, corporate blogs. And as you are writing your blog post, it has like a keyword strength meter that updates real time with each keystroke. Really quite cool. And then the Covario Organic Search Insight also gives you uh, that sort of feedback. And uh, here is a screenshot of Scribe. Oh no, sorry, this one is com Compendium Blogware. And this, as you can see, shows the uh, keyword strength meter. As you type your blog post, it goes from red to yellow to green. So you want green before you hit um, submit, before you hit post or publish. And then uh, Scribe, uh, Scribe SEO. This one is a uh, screenshot of Scribe. And uh, let me just show you one other screenshot. Of course, this is only going to work for you if you are running WordPress as your content management system. Uh, but if you have a blog and that's running WordPress, you can work, use Scribe for, for that. If your entire site is running on WordPress, then you can use this across your entire site. All right, so um, next up. Um, Let's talk about a few other metrics like top converting or performing page two ranked pages. That would be pretty cool to track, right? So we could see that, for example, pages that were ranked on page two in Google for, if they're already doing the business for us. They're already driving a decent number of conversions. If we were to just um, make that little leap onto page one, just think the floodgates would open, right? It would just be a, a huge opportunity for us. So that, that's something that would be worth tracking. Another one is top converting or performing keywords on one engine that are non-performing on another. What would you do with a list like that, right? So let's say that you had a list of keywords that you are performing well for, you have a lot of conversions for on Bing, but you are nowhere and not getting anything for these keywords on Google. What would you do with a list like that? Hmm. Hmm. Think for a minute. What would you do with a list like that? Keywords that you are crushing it on Bing for and not on Google. Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll give you the answer. You would buy AdWords, <laughs> Google AdWords. You would sign up for uh, AdWords if you aren't already, and uh, you'd start bidding on those keywords because that would give you instant traffic. You already know that you're going to perform well with those keywords in terms of conversions because it's been proven on Bing. You just need to start getting some instant visibility for those keywords on Google, and the cash registers start going to start ringing, right? So that's a great entry point. And then, I know that's not SEO, but that's the next step. And then as you um, – work to improve your SEO for those keywords to rank on Google, then you can dial down the, the PPC. Another uh, interesting metric is highest potential keywords you're getting traffic for. Right? So highest potential. You're getting some traffic for these keywords, but there's a lot of potential left. Maybe because you're not ranked well for these keywords, uh, you're ranked pretty poorly, or maybe you just don't have um, uh, really 
compelling value proposition in your uh, search listing and the, the title or the snippet or whatever, right? So you're you're getting some traffic, but you're not getting uh, the level of conversions that you think you should be or you could be. That'd be a great thing to uh, get your wrap your head around. Another one is highest potential keywords you're not getting traffic for based on potential referrers, revenue, and ROI. Okay, so what's the difference between this one and the previous metric? Well, you're not getting any traffic for these keywords. These keywords are like not on your radar. You know, so um, if you are a baby furniture manufacturer and you're selling bassinets and cribs and so forth, I bet you that baby names is not on your radar as a keyword to target because you're not selling baby names. But yet you do the keyword research and keyword brainstorming, and you see that, wow, tons and tons of traffic for baby names and these are my my customers, my prospects, because they're expectant parents who are searching for that keyword. Let's uh, start targeting that keyword. You know, so that's a potential keyword that completely off the radar, no get, you're, you're not getting any traffic for, and yet what a great opportunity if that were to show up on your radar. Let's uh, run through quickly uh, some of the search engine supplied uh, tools. These are all free. Thank you, Google. Thank you, Bing. Uh, Google has Webmaster Central, which uh, includes webmaster tools and um, some, uh, forums and, and a whole bunch of FAQs, frequently asked questions, and just a, a ton of, uh, of resources. But webmaster tools, Google Webmaster Tools is the main thing that we're going to talk about. I'll show you a few screenshots. And then uh, Bing Webmaster Center is Bing's version of that. It's not as extensive, but uh, still worth uh, signing up for. Again, a free account, so there's no reason why you shouldn't have an account with uh, Bing Webmaster Center. There's also Google Insights for Search, Google AdWords Keyword Tool, and Google Trends. All three of those tools, of course, are free and are great for doing keyword research to see which keywords are popular. You want to do that keyword popularity um, uh, scoring to see what uh, what's popular and what's not popular, which verb tenses, plural, singulars, et cetera. Okay, so let's look at uh, Google Webmaster Tools first. This one is quite an uh, interesting um, report. It shows you top search queries where you are ranking and potentially getting traffic, but not necessarily. How else would you get a report like this except from Google? This is pretty darn cool. Thank you, Google, for providing this information. So they're saying, I'm ranking for such and such keywords, and these are the average positions, and it could very well be that I'm getting some traffic, but I may not be. I might have a horrible search listing that drives the uh, searchers away. They don't even want to click on my listing. Uh, so. You know, there's. Uh, I just the other day saw a search listing for um, uh, a site where the the keyword, or I mean the, the the snippet portion of the search listing just said processing. Yeah, that that's terrible, right? So we, we need a much better, uh, uh, more compelling search listing if we want to get clicks from the search results. So <clears throat> I forget what site that was, but um, I suppose it's just as well that I don't remember that. Um, that site because I don't want to embarrass them publicly. But uh, yeah, it's it's not a good look. Anyway, so that's one report. Another report. Drum roll. Do, do, do. What Googlebot sees. This one is, uh, this particular page is showing the link text, the anchor text that um, Googlebot is finding in links that are pointing to my site. And uh, external links are inbound links, internal links are internal within your site. So when you link to yourself, are you using uh, stupid keywords like click here and read more and check this out and, and that sort of thing? Or are you using keyword rich links that are relevant to the product, blog post, article, category, whatever that you're linking to. That's another useful report. And like I said, the, all this stuff is free, so there's no reason why you shouldn't be uh, using these tools and uh, pouring over the reports. 
Now, I, I mentioned that you can do some uh, digging into what your competitor's uh, link authority is based on, where they're getting their links from. Well, you can also look at, and, and this is very imprecise and inaccurate, but it's better than nothing. You can see what your uh, traffic trends are for your competitors using tools like Compete.com, Quantcast.com, Alexa.com, and uh, you can also see what keywords that these uh, folks are getting traffic under uh, from Google using SEMrush, uh, search metrics. That's pretty cool stuff. And uh, Hitwise as well from Experian, which is that, that's a super pricey, so most folks don't uh, sign up for that. But SEMrush and search metrics are, are both very affordable. I mean, imagine being able to get a keyword list of what keywords your your competitors are getting traffic from Google on. That's pretty cool. Okay, here's a screenshot of Compete showing uh, traffic trends over time. And a lot of these tools will give you demographics like uh, male versus female, um, household income, um, age ranges, that sort of stuff. Uh, there's Quantcast. And if you see the same sort of trend on multiple of these tools, then you can start to believe it. You know, take this stuff with a grain of salt unless you see a lot of corroborating evidence across the different tools and maybe in the media or uh, you know, the, the news, you know, like, oh, yeah, these guys took a dive in their, uh, their stock um, price and so forth. And you can see uh, the conversion, I mean, the uh, traffic's going down um, or whatever. That, like I said, take it with a grain of salt because this is – just by its very nature, inaccurate. It's not like these guys, uh, Quantcast and, and Compete and so forth, have hacked into the Google Analytics <laughs> of uh, of these competitor sites. So um, it, this is th this is uh, an estimate that you can see here: male versus female, age, um, ethnicity, um, size of household, and stuff like that. Pretty cool. So Compete, Quantcast. Here's Alexa. Uh, Alexa is owned by Amazon. Um, bear in mind that there are folks who like um, kind of uh, mess with the system to try and make their site look more popular than it really is so that they can charge more to advertisers. There's actually tools out there that will um, inflate your Alexa ranking. They'll pretend to be Alexa toolbar users uh, visiting your site and inflate the numbers. So take it with a grain of salt. All right, and here's another uh, screenshot from Alexa. And I, you know how on Amazon you can see uh, uh, when when you look at a book, people who bought this book also bought these other books. You can see people who have visited this site have also visited these other sites. That's pretty cool. Another Alexa screenshot. This here is a screenshot of SEMrush, SEMrush.com. And as I said, it will give you a report on what uh, keywords your, your competitor is getting traffic for from Google and, and show the historical trending. And, yeah. and then here's another uh, report from SEMrush. This one is not the um, uh, keyword report of which keywords you're getting traffic, uh, your competitors getting traffic under, but instead the, um, this juxtaposes um, you and your competitor or multiple competitors and shows the, the, um, the uh, search traffic trend over time. So. And then finally, um, uh, I didn't include a, uh, a screenshot of search metrics, um, but that's, that's definitely a, a, a very cool tool that should be in your wheelhouse as well. And then finally, this is Hitwise, which, as I said, prohibitively expensive, five figures, <laughs> sort of expensive. So um, cool if you can afford it, but most, most uh, folks don't. All right, now let's get into inbound links. And uh, the aforementioned tools I talked about earlier, uh, OpenSight Explorer, Majestic SEO, and Link Research tools. 
Let's start off with Open Site Explorer. This one is going to give you some data for free if you don't have a paid account, but it's very limited. Um, I strongly encourage you to sign up for a paid account um, with SEO Moz, which will give you um, full access to Open Site Explorer. Open Site Explorer is part of the SEO Moz uh, suite of, of um, tools. This particular um, uh, tab just gives you a um, uh, you know, a list of the, the links and, and anchor text used and, and uh, other metrics uh, relating to the importance of each of those links. That's very helpful. And then on uh, this um, tab, you're, you're getting a, a list of various metrics, link metrics that um, um, SEO Moz has come up with. Their approximation of page rank is called Moz rank. Their approximation of trust rank, which is a, um, it's like page rank, but it starts with a trusted set of sites uh, as the seed um, set of, of sites to start the calculation from. So their approximation of trust rank is called Moz Trust. They also have page authority. Um, all three of those metrics, by the way, are on a logarithmic scale, just like PageRank score. So going from a 0 to 1 or a 1 to a 2, you know, a 2 to a 3, the gaps between those integers get logarithmically larger. So going from a 2 to a 3 is like nothing compared to going, it's like walking from one part of the living room to another versus uh, 6 to 7 might be, you know, going from here to the moon sort of thing. So. Uh, uh, all three of those metrics that I mentioned are also uh, logarithmic in nature. Um, anyways, you get uh, page-specific metrics, um, subdomain-specific metrics, and domain-wide metrics uh, for um, uh, in, in relation to all these things on uh, Open Site Explorer for the site in question that you're analyzing, and then. This tab shows you the anchor text um, distribution. What are the most popular um, anchor texts that are being used when people link to you? And this is very helpful to see if you look over-optimized, if it looks like you're uh, buying links, because there are too many links that just, it's too large of a percentage of links that are very commercial in nature. You know, if you're trying to, if you're a certain used car lot in in San Diego, and most of the links say used car San Diego, yeah, that looks pretty suspicious. <laughs> I think you deserve a penalty for that. Then you have um, Majestic SEO, which is a competitor to Open Site Explorer. I encourage you to get both. I think they're both excellent and they're both affordable. This uh, particular um, uh, report is showing some uh, uh, trending over time in, in acquisition of backlinks as well as uh, the numbers of backlinks coming into your site and domains that are linking to you and so forth. And then if you click on the graph, you can get um, uh, you, you can change the settings on the graph so that you could see instead of the acquisition of links over time each month in terms of what the number of links are, you can see a cumulative report, and that's what you're seeing right now, of the total number of links accumulated up until that date. And so you can see that um, uh, the first graph, the first um, the chart there is total backlinks for you and a competitor or, or you know two competitors. And then the next chart underneath that is referring domains so sites that are linking to you. And so you can see that the yellow um, uh, site is getting a lot of links, but a lot of them are site-wide links. There are a great many links that are coming from a small number of sites. So that doesn't look too, that looks questionable, <laughs> looks dubious. That's something that we want to uh, correct if possible and get uh, uh, more diversity in our link profile if that's the case for us, right? If, we, if we're getting a lot of site-wide links uh, from a smallish number of sites, we want more links from uh, more sites, not more links from fewer sites. 
And then this is my favorite tool for link uh, analysis and research. It's called Link Research Tools, linkresearchtools.com. This particular report, and there are like, there are, I don't know, 15 or something different tools inside of this suite of, of tools from uh, Link Research Tools, or LRT. And uh, this particular one is called the BLP, or Backlink Profiler Tool. And you can see a distribution of the sites linking to your competitor or to you um, based on the theme of the site, you know, computers, education, uh, nonprofit, whatever. And you can also see by site type, is it a blog, is it a, um, um, a CMS-based website, et cetera. And then if you scroll down on this BLP report, you can see that uh, uh, the distribution of anchor text and of the types of links in terms of are they followed links or no followed, in other words, not passing page rank, are they just mentions without uh, it being a link at all. And you actually want people to mention your, your brand or company name or domain and not link to you sometimes because that's, that naturally happens in the wild. If nobody does that, that looks suspicious, right? So we don't want to stick out like a sore thumb and look suspicious to Google because we might get a penalty. We, at least we'll get further scrutiny by Google, and Google has this army of manual reviewers, human reviewers that check out websites looking to see if you're, you're playing dirty tricks or doing things that you shouldn't be. Um, this is another uh, report out of Link Research Tools. This is called CLA, or Competitive Landscape Analysis. Again, it shows you um, distributions of types of, of links, or types of sites that are linking, themes of those uh, sites that are linking. And uh, what this does is different from the BLP tool, is it uh, juxtaposes an average of your competitors to you. So you can see for sure that you stick out like a sore thumb. If you have way too few bloggy links compared to all your competitors, that looks pretty suspicious. Or if you compare yourself to all the top ranking sites for the keyword, right? if um, everybody else has a lot of bloggy links and you have almost none, that looks suspicious. Or conversely, if you have way too many bloggy links compared to everybody else that's ranking highly for that keyword that you're targeting, hmm, that looks kind of suspicious too. So. And then if you scroll down on that report, again, you um, can see the, uh, uh, the, the uh, data, the actual links that are um, pointing to Jiminy each Christ. of your competitors. Yeah. And uh, you can see the anchor text used, the um, various metrics like uh, MozRank and, and so forth. Pretty cool stuff. And there's filtering capability as well. You can say, just show me those URLs that have uh, certain keywords in the anchor text or that a, a certain range of MozRank scores from uh, 4 to 10 or um, number of backlinks of at least X or whatever. That's pretty cool. All right. Now we're getting close to the end here, so uh, thanks for sticking with me. I know it's like drinking from a fire hose, so uh, good for you for, for staying with us. I mentioned that you want to treat this like an experimental science, that you want to come up with hypotheses and test those hypotheses and so forth. You need to test everything. I really need to encourage you to do that. Um, when you run these tests in regards to SEO, it's very different from landing page testing or doing PPC testing because you can really only vary one thing at a time and see what the results are. Um, if you change your title tag and your H1 and uh, your keyword prominence in the body copy and anchor text and links internally that point to that page, how do you know when the needle moved what it was that moved it in the positive direction? You could have done some things that moved it in a negative direction as well. So you need to vary only one thing at a time, see what the impact is, and then uh, run another test. You can test so many different things, Spider, uh, uh, your, your, like I said, the uh, on-page factors, the t titles, H1, uh, keyword prominence, and the body copy, anchor text of internal links, et cetera, et cetera. You can also measure based on multiple metrics, not just the rankings uh, improvement or, or decrease. You can watch the spidering behavior, uh, what happens to the spidering activity of Googlebot, traffic to the page, resulting sales, 
uh, page yield, uh, keywords per page, et cetera. And I included a, a URL to an article I wrote for multi-channel merchant uh, on this uh, topic there that could be useful. All right, so a um, couple of quick things here. Just uh, you want to be careful to use the tools properly. And uh, one example is the Google AdWords keyword tool. If you don't log in to your AdWords account or your Google account, you will not get historical trending out of that tool. You won't get as comprehensive of a keyword suggestion lists. And then um, also if you are using the tool, the Google AdWords keyword tool, and you are not uh, specifying that you want exact match instead of broad match, this is critical. If you don't tick that box that says exact and untick the box that says broad, um, you will get really useless data in terms of SEO from this tool uh, because all the, uh, the numbers are going to be overinflated. They're going to include uh, you know, potentially hundreds or thousands of other keywords. The, the numbers uh, will be massively overinflated. So a quick example, compare uh, just in the default setting where it has exact match the word blog, how many searches supposedly for the word blog. Uh, comparatively, if you switch it to exact match only, it's a fraction. It drops to like um, ne next to nothing. It's like, what is it, 100 million or whatever, down to uh, uh, 2 million or something, right? So definitely change the match type so that it's no longer broad but um, exact match only when you're using this tool for SEO purposes. All right. Lastly, um, recognize too that when you're doing PPC and SEO that cannibalization happens. It isn't always just uh, rainbows and unicorns. You might have um, a situation where you're buying keywords on AdWords and you are basically buying traffic that you would have gotten for free if you would have just left it for uh, people to click on your organic or unpaid listings. So that can happen. You want to be smart about how you're doing your, your PPC. I'm not advising you to stop doing PPC. Just be smart about it. Measure this stuff and see uh, what the synergies or cannibalization effects are so that you can make better decisions in terms of uh, your, uh, your, your SEO and your, your PPC efforts. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about that topic, and you can see here on this graph that uh, there is an inadvertent test that was run. I'm, I'm a big fan of testing, but not necessarily inadvertent tests. They accidentally shut off their PPC, <laughs> and so they, they flatlined with their, uh, their PPC traffic. And uh, you can see a, a commensurate jump in the organic traffic uh, as soon as they shut off their PPC. So in that case, they were getting, uh, they were paying for traffic they would have gotten for free. Kind of interesting. I wrote a, an article on this topic for Search Engine Land, uh, which um, if you have time, you might want to check out. All right, so we are um, at the end of the deck here. We have a few minutes for questions. Um, I will give you a few resources that you can look into here if you're interested in learning more about uh, analytics. Um, I'm a big fan of analytics, as you could probably tell. So um, the Web Analytics Association is a great uh, resource if, if um, you're interested in, in uh, joining an association webanalyticsassociation.org, and then their blog is waablog.webanalyticsassociation.org. Um, a a well-known author in the area of analytics is um, um, uh, Kaushik, um, uh, that's his last name, his first name just suddenly escaped me, Avanish, <laughs> sorry, Avanish Kaushik. Um, he, he wrote a book called uh, Web Analytics an Hour a Day, which is excellent. He also has a blog called Occam's Razor, which is very good. And um, the eMetric Summit, if you're interested in conferences, is a great conference to go to if um, you want to learn more about analytics. All right, so uh, let's take some Q&A for uh, uh, about five minutes or so. And also, uh, one last thing here, if you're interested in getting a copy of this uh, PowerPoint slide deck, 
and uh, also I have an article on how to get higher rankings in the number two search engine, which is YouTube. Um, so that is oftentimes not on people's radar. They're not even tracking their rankings in YouTube and, and their search rankings in the YouTube search engine. I have an article about that, um, which you can get both of these things if you email my assistant. Uh, her email is admin at stephanspencer.com. All right, uh, Yasmina. Perfect. Thank you so much, Stefan, for a great presentation. All righty, we do have a few questions that have come in, and we'll just take them in the order they did come in. Mohammed asks, UTM tags, do they dilute the unique page rank? Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, no, Google is um, smart enough to recognize that, uh, that that's a parameter that they actually added. <laughs> So in, in their Google Analytics, and so that they can collapse the page rank to the canonical URL. Um, it doesn't hurt to use a canonical tag on your pages that doesn't have any tracking tag. And I'm not saying anything specific to the UTM tag, which is part of uh, Google Analytics. But just in general, if you want to collapse the duplicates, a great way to do that, um, regardless of what you're using for your tracking parameters and so forth, is a canonical tag. You just, in the HTML, list the canonical URL, the, the URL that is definitive, uh, the one without the tracking parameters, and uh, Google will collapse all the page rank to that one URL. Thank you very much. And our next one is from Jens. Jens asks, are you covering the additional challenges regarding international SEO, such as localization in your new book? Uh, we do have some stuff on uh, different country search engines, but it's not uh, a significant portion of the book. So um, yeah, so that's kind of the, the short answer is kind of. <laughs> Great. And Matthias asks, what tools are useful for measuring non-performing pages? Yeah, so that's built into a tool from um, my experience, uh, the, the tool that I had developed called Gravity Stream, which is now um, Organic Search Optimizer. That's part of Covario's suite of tools. I know that that tracks non-performing pages. I don't know what else out there tracks it. I've been speaking about this metric for several years now though, so hopefully there are some tools out there that kind of decided to start tracking that. Great. Um, Andrea asks, and she says, I'm a small consulting business. Is there a tool that would give me the most bang for my buck? I'm a member of SEO Moz. Okay. So if you are already uh, signed up with SEO Moz, that probably would have been my first suggestion. Uh, Majestic SEO, I think, is another really good one. And um, you know, if you have the budget, link research tools is a bit more, but it provides uh, just so much more in terms of uh, capabilities for um, link building and link research. So uh, yeah, I, I would definitely include that one on the list. And SEM Rush, if you also have um, some budget left over, but you're, you're doing a good job just by having SEO Moz. So that's a, that's, a, that's a great start. Thank you. Uh, Colleen asks, when testing different elements, how long should each test last before you can see an effect? So I would watch for the, the rankings to shift, and um, I would look to get some statistically significant enough uh, numbers from that test in terms of uh, traffic and conversions. So, uh, you know, in, in um, multivariate testing and, and A-B split testing, I think they say that uh, you need to get at least 15 conversions a day to do an accurate A-B split test, and you need way more than that, I think, to do uh, multivariate testing. I'm not a multivariate testing uh, person. I'm, I'm not an expert on, on that sort of um, aspect of online marketing, so I, I can't tell you what... I think from memory that's uh, statistically significant numbers, but uh, read the book Landing Page Optimization if you want to learn more about that aspect. But just re realize you need to get statistically significant enough numbers in terms of your conversions in order to know if that test um, worked or not. Great. And we just have time for just a couple more questions. Uh, Mohammed would like to know your thoughts, Stefan, on Google Plus One's potential role on search results. 
Yeah, I think over time you're going to see um, Google paying more and more attention to uh, these um, um, social signals and um, you know, user engagement metrics too. In fact, there's a whole chapter in the new edition of the Art of SEO on social signals. So uh, chapter 8, I believe. And uh, yeah, definitely uh, pick that up and, and read that chapter. Great. And one here, suppose you get good traffic via AdWords and as a result eventually better organic listing. Will Google penalize you if you stop paying for AdWords? Okay, so there's a myth built into that question that when you buy AdWords that you're going to get SEO benefit from doing so. That is not true. Um, you might get more known in the world by spending a lot of money on AdWords and then maybe you'll get more media mentions and more links because of that, but that's kind of a, uh, um, a, a side effect. It's not really, uh, you're, you're not getting a direct impact in terms of um, SEO benefits from buying AdWords. So consequently, no, you're not going to get a, a rankings drop by stopping your, uh, your PPC. You're going to continue to uh, um, get what you deserve in terms of your SEO based on your link authority and, and uh, uh, quality of your content and so forth. Great. And one from Allison. Allison asks, what is the lag time between a change in a variable and seeing the result in Google? Yeah, so it can be very quick. Um, you can have a new page indexed within minutes. It's pretty amazing. And uh, so you can start seeing the impact in your rankings pretty darn quickly, if, particularly if it's a page that's getting um, uh, spidered frequently by Googlebot, if it's got a lot of authority in the eyes of, of Google. You know, that's kind of a, a, um, a, there's a strong correlation there. The more authoritative or more page rank the page has, the more it gets spidered. So you can use that kind of as a, as a proxy for page rank. Is if a page gets spidered a lot, it probably has uh, a lot of page rank or importance in the eyes of Google. So uh, the short answer is uh, if the page is spidered pretty frequently, uh, it's pretty fast. Great. And our final question is from Janine. And she asks, what is your new version of Truths of SEO to be expected? She would like to pre-order her copy. Uh, I'm sorry, the Truth of SEO? Yes, I think she has a title um, not correct. Judy, if you're referring to the Art of SEO, the second edition, yes. If, Stefan, you want to give um, some more details on that to folks? Okay. So yeah, that book is coming out on the 17th in ebook form. So March 17th, it will be available. To, um, you can pre-order it now, and then um, it will uh, be available in print form approximately two weeks after that. It'll be at all the major bookstores and on Amazon and so forth. But as I said, you can pre-order it now from Amazon, from O'Reilly.com, and uh, other online books uh, booksellers. And of course, you can uh, pre-order the ebook. Uh, version today from O'Reilly.com as well. 